filmed on location at our beautiful Old Westbury 604 acre campus. We offer a variety of majors to choose from and a wonderful opportunity to discover the leader in you. Please visit us at oldwestbury.edu. When can you start? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another program in our series, Living on Long Island. Today, we will, con we will continue, if I get my mouth straight, we will continue our discussion of Long Island's rich history. Uh, again, I have the privilege of having two guests who are knowledgeable and passionate about history. They are Nicole Menkesey. That's right. Great, all right. Uh, she's a archivist and a collections manager at the Oyster Bay Historical Society and at the Raynham Hall Museum. That's correct. You have very impressive credentials. Thank you. I hope you get paid more than... Uh, <laughs> and Robert okay. Harrison, a historian and a photographer uh, from East Meadow and a native of Long Island. Born and raised. Also a baseball maven. Another show will take care of that, Robert. Sure. Are you wearing your Mets tie today? Yes, I am. Excellent. Oh, oh you discovered that? Oh. Okay, good. Well, opening day is only a few days away. Oh, good luck. <laughs> okay, um, the last program we left off with Theodore Roosevelt and mm. Typhoid Mary right. at the end, and uh, let's pick up, in a funny way, history is interconnected sometimes we don't know. Mm -hmm. Like if I mention Charles Lindbergh, how is that flight, in a way, related to Theodore Roosevelt? Well, uh, the flight was taken off from uh, Roosevelt Field, and it was named after Roosevelt's son, Quentin, I believe, mm -hmm. who died in World War I right. uh, in an airplane uh, incident. And uh, it was, before that, it was called the Mineola Airfield. Okay. Oh. okay. So if you go to Roosevelt Field, I believe in, one, in the mall is a plaque, actually. Yes, it is. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So what, who was Lindbergh, and why was it such a tremendous achievement? Charles Lindbergh, uh, there were many flights to get across the Atlantic. And the, 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 before him, actually, they made it a few times about crews of people, three or four, and bigger airplanes, but no one ever flew it alone. Mm -hmm. And he did. Right. Mm -hmm. There was people that made it as far as uh, Iceland and stuff like that, but uh, uh, he did. And then he had the spirit of St. Louis, which mm -hmm. is his plane. In fact, we have artifacts of his plane in the Cradle of Aviation Museum in, in Uniondale okay. mm -hmm. uh, for Long Island uh, history of aviation, which is yeah. tremendous. You know, you're talking about Grumman, you're talking about uh, right. uh, Republic Air aircraft, you're talking the Sperry gyroscope. That was the hub before World War II and World War II afterwards. That was the employment of Long Island, it was aviation. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Lindbergh, as you know, the story is very easy to know, in 1927, was yes. it? Yes. Uh, and this missed the, uh, I think, the wires from a pole before he took off. Uh, and the, uh, I think it's called the Lone Eagle. And what, how many hours did it take him? 30 hours? I'm trying to think. And he, was a, he, was, uh, he was a hero at the time. Oh, unbelievable, yeah. Ticket tape yeah. parade, everything. Came uh, back to New York City. Paris, they gave him a parade. And then he came back to New York City, they gave him a parade. Uh, and he visited Long Island very much uh, uh, afterwards. And in uh, fact, was a guest in, um, I think, is uh, Port, Port Jefferson, Port Washington, with uh, uh, the man on Newsday. Uh, had a, 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 I can't think of his name. But uh, he was a guest of his and, wow. and, uh, and stayed time in Long Island. He just didn't visit here to fly. He came wow. back. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's, a, that's another, uh, sometimes history is filled with tragic figures. Uh, Guggenheim. Was Guggenheim, okay. okay. Right. He, was, uh, Guggenheim. he was a hero at the time, but his later life, and this won't right. be discussed today, but his later life, he became, a, if there's a word, anti-hero, and the tragedy of his son right. and uh, his pro-German sentiment. So that's another mm -hmm. issue. But in 1927, out of what we now call Roosevelt Field, he right. flew the first solo flight. That's stayed right. overnight in the Garden City Hotel. Wow. Okay, and uh, as, as they say, uh, stayed with Guggenheim's and Falaise is the name of it, which is still open today, which is run by a private organization. Stayed up there with Harry Guggenheim, who was a big fa fan of his. In fact, uh, his wife, uh, Peggy Guggenheim, I think it was, did a silhouette of him, wow. like all the guests. So it was, and and the museum in New York is real, is named for that family. Uh, Guggen, yeah, it's yeah, a okay. very very wealthy. Yeah, very, Don't forget the North Shore Long Island was a very wealthy area. Okay, that's yeah. true. All right, now um, the twenty seven. We're talking the the Roaring Twenties. Yeah, now, jazz age. The jazz, jazz age. Now, 
uh, inform the audience the difference between the Gilded Age and the Jazz Age, and how was the Jazz Age Jazz age, say that three times fast. <laughs> How was that prominent on Long Island uh, then? Well, I mean, I guess the difference between the Gilded Age and the Jazz Age are uh, what about forty years? Eighteen yeah, eighties. <laughs> right. Well, the Gilded Age name comes from the Mark Twain book okay. on that era of the uh, uh, don't be others the the the, the expansion of oil, trains, merchandise, the industrial revolution, revolution. Mm -hmm. which made many millionaires. Right. right. Okay. The Jazz Age is the relaxation after World War I, right. where these millionaires get to play with their toys. Play with their right. toys, and, yeah. and they did, and they did quite a bit of that on Long Island. There was so much, uh, there was quite a bit of speedboat racing. Uh, these these uh, palaces were built on the North Shore, and actually really kind of into uh, the central area of, of Long Island are they as still well. Here? Are they still uh, up today? Or I think, um, I don't really have a, a, quite a number, but I think something, uh, somewhere about 65 or 70 percent of those estates are now raised and have either been developed on or they were used uh, to create the Long Island think, Railroad and some of the yeah. other other air now, parkways. Yeah. Right. Now Bob, were these, uh, the Jazz Age on Long Island, were these Long Islanders who lived here and then celebrated or were they lived in the city and came out here in the weekends or both? Right. Well, let's put a definition to it of who these people were, Right. okay? The average person in the 1920s, the workman, which would have been me, mm -hmm. and maybe you, definitely uh, me, worked six days a week, 10 hours a day. Mm -hmm. So we wasn't involved in the jazz age except for listening into the early crankness of the radio to get the tunes, and maybe buying a record. Uh, I guess they had 78 records you'd bring home and wax recordings. Mm -hmm. But the celebration of the jazz age is the wealthy socialites mm -hmm. that went to the speakeasies, that could spend the money, that could have the huge parties which influenced authors, I think, right, to write like novels. Gatsby, yeah. obviously. F. Gatsby. F. Scott, uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald. Scott Fitzgerald's right, right, Gatsby, right. Because right. right. he lived up in Great Neck, as you know. So some of them did live here all the time. Oh, let's take Great oh. Neck alone. Okay. Do, you, do you know that uh, Eddie Cantor lived in Great Neck? Fancy Fanny Bryce, you may not know her, but she was a famous sure. actress. Charlie Chapman, Oscar Hammerstein II, wow. Groucho Marx, George M. Cohen. In fact, George M. Cohen in Great Neck wrote a song called 45 Minutes to Broadway. Right. Mm -hmm. So they, and, and the reason is we go back to uh, the expansion, the Long Island Railroad. They mm -hmm. could commute mm -hmm. to the city, the Big Apple, mm -hmm. and therefore and still have these private estates right. and be secluded. So and, some of them lived here themselves. all the time and then worked in the city too. Right. Well, much like several like celebrities today. here yeah. that yeah. live on. So Long did the Jazz Age end? With the Great Depression, the stock mm -hmm. market crash of '29, mm -hmm. was it ending before that? Was it, uh, you know? I would say it ended slowly in the 30s, slowly, okay. slowly, because mm -hmm. the wealth was drained. Right, know. and then, of course, the crash. I mean, that devastated so many people. And, and th these estates that were really built to be manned by hundreds, sometimes, of staff. Servants uh, and all, yeah. You know, those, that well dried up. So, uh, and again, a lot of, of these beautiful homes, these palaces, really were, it became dilapidated and eventually or either um, in the 60s when the, the expressway came in right they did that land they mm -hmm. bought the land up the taxes became prohibited just like right. England the same thing happened to England the taxes became so that they give tours of their mansions now just to pay the taxes yeah. this is true so these 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 people at during this time the jazz age these people once they got older and passed did their children keep that did they did they sell them off? Did they move away? Were they not interested anymore? Or Maybe a little bit of all those yeah. all those Yeah, but in Oyster Bay, we have things like, is the planting fields in Oyster Bay? Right, that is Coe Hall, the, the Coe's home, and that is their estate, and it is, it's become planting fields. It's, I believe it's a national, uh, it's either a state New York park state or not, New yeah, York State right, Park. Yeah. Um, and it's an arboretum, and it's a it's an amazing um, expansion of land. And in fact, I was just watching something about um, you know movies are always uh, filmed. Or movies are filmed all over Long Island, but uh, Planting Fields was just recently used um, for a huge epic um, movie. And so it's it's just interesting that all of that is um, is there. But it's mostly there because the Coes. Uh, deeded that over. So that sometimes in those cases, these buildings like Milneck Manor and whatnot become schools right, right, right. 
um, <coughs> and then end up sort of repurposing into something Westbury more significant. Gardens, was that uh, beautiful? Right, the Phipps Estate. Phipps Estate, yes, right. And, that right. Was, and that's was obviously that still open. Estate? I don't know what. Um, I it's a beautiful place. I believe oh, it beautiful. might still oh, yes. be private. Yes, I'm not sure. I know that there's. There are some left like that, right. huge estates, which, are, which they didn't break up into you know, acre mm -hmm. land mm -hmm. houses. Uh, but majority but they, of them right. but they're are yeah they are set so up they, as museums. These, so. And then we'll we'll get to the next topic. Mm -hmm. But these these people involved in the jazz age, what kind of people? What were they? Were they um, philanthropists? Were they uh, money makers? Were they were they politicians? In other words, right. if Theodore Roosevelt died in 1919, did his family stay here? Do you know mm -hmm. any record? Did they, did they leave? Mm -hmm. Would politicians right. have been involved in this, or was this mostly a, a social, a high social class? It was a high people? social class, I think, right. more some, than... There was a scattering of politicians right. involved with it, too, because I know a couple of mayors from New York lived out in Suffolk and, and Nassau County. Mm -hmm. you know. but, they but you think about like the Vanderbilt. New York. They're not supposed to live out here. After they retire, oh, right. not, not, not the But you think about like the Vanderbilt that. Estate, <laughs> right? The Vanderbilt Estate in um, Centerport, or uh, that's, right. uh, yeah, right. you know, that's an example. It's uh, children of these incredibly wealthy men that sort of um, intermarry with other wealthy families, and then they build these beautiful. Uh, the Pratt Estates exactly had five, and five Pratt estates. brothers, uh, sons that uh, had estates up there, which right. are, are turned into different functions wow. today. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you have uh, Idle Hour from Vanderbilt. Oh right, mm -hmm. right. That's what I'm talking about. The other mm -hmm. state, which is now run by uh, New York Tech, I think, and and, and uh, Blue Point. That's right. right? So That's some right. of these had a, a turn of uh, reason for 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 being there today. If they wasn't, they would have been bulldozed. That's know? true. Yeah. All right, so. Um, Let's get now to World War II. World War II in many levels uh, of our country of probably, as Tom Brokaw said, the greatest generation at that time. Uh, what we accomplished in, uh, we, uh, won, uh, we defeated the Depression and we defeated uh, one of the greatest monsters in history. Mm -hmm. We won World War II. After World War II, Long Island became a different place. That's you right. could almost mm -hmm. flick a switch. It turned from... Uh, to use a phrase from black and white to color like mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. um, suburbia. Right, suburbia. Um, the GI Bill, uh, the GI Bill of Rights, which gave low interest homes to homeowners. The interstate highway system. Later, uh, after World War II, we cannot talk about Long Island without mentioning the name Robert Moses. Right. And who was Robert Moses? Well, I think uh, we boned up on yeah, him. Yeah, we did. But, uh, <laughs> That's it. Uh, actually, he started in, I think, the 1920s under the governor on 30s. And right. what made him so powerful, we'll and discuss what, what, what he did. What was his title, actually? Uh, uh, Commissioner of Parks, right. I think, okay. for yeah. New York State. This is New York State or New York City? State. New York, I think the city also. He worked in a number of number okay. of variances. Right. But right. the interesting thing about him, and you're going to talk about him, is that he had the right to raise money through bonds. So he had power. Money is power. And so, therefore, separately from New York State or New York City, he raised money through selling of bonds for most of his projects. Mm -hmm. And there were many, many projects. Many, many projects. The, the parkway system, obviously, yeah. the LIE. I mean, not to mention all of the um, uh, different uh, city parks. Of course, Jones Beach and that causeway, opening that up to the public. Um, but now, I mean, we're, we're talking, to, you know, let me go back. Let me relate today to the old days. Okay. Sometimes we have to. We have to understand better today if we go back before. Today, we, seem, we can't seem to do anything. Things take forever. Mm -hmm. uh, the Belt Parkway, let's, we can number a 10. How did he get all these? He seemed to have done so many things. Did people, was there opposition? Did he, how did, did he get around things? How did he do There's it? There's a lot of opposition to him because mm -hmm. he actually, he loved the automobile. Okay. Everything was based upon the automobile and all his projects. He was actually going to take uh, the original of the expressway right into downtown Manhattan and wind up in, uh, uh, in the Battery Park That's area. Right. And people went, no, no, no. They had actually had they actually mm -hmm. had an organized opposition to him. All right, um, uh, his power reached far and wide in Long Island. The World's mm -hmm. Fair, 1939. World's right. Fair, 1964. You know, uh, and even Babylon actually put up statue on him. If you go to Babylon, the town where he lived, he lived in uh, off Oak Bay, Bay Beach. But how did he overcome uh, this opposition? Because of money and bonds, and people were afraid of okay. crossing his trail. That's true. Yeah, right. I mean, it was almost like a dictatorship. I mean, he just and he, he was never elected to anything, right? 
don't think so. I don't know if he, no, no, I don't no, believe appointed, so. Appointed, appointed. Uh, no, I'll tell you what, if you want to do a parallel idea to him, take uh, J. Edgar Hoover. Okay, right? okay, okay. Put in office, what, 1921? Right. And never left office to 1960s. In the 60s, yes. Right, because everybody was, you didn't cross J. Edgar Hoover. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right, and you didn't cross uh, Mr. Moses analogy. either. Okay, now you read the book, uh, Robert Caro, was it? Wrote a book on oh, the power, uh, power broker. The power broker? Uh, well, that's a pretty hefty book. Yes, uh, a lot of information. Um, I, I, I've read some of it. Um, I, I just wanted to really understand why there was such a sort of love-hate relationship Please. between Long Island and uh, and Long Islanders and Robert Moses. And I mean, part of that has to do with the demolition, literally demolition of neighborhoods and and. Yeah. Um, I mean, not just mm. not just uh, putting thousands of people out of their homes, but hundreds of thousands wow. of people out of their homes in his grand scheme. Mainly in Queens, correct? In I would th yeah, in Queens and along uh, the in the city on the east side of the, uh, Manhattan. Um, so it was sort yeah, of a redevelopment. Out. I can't project. figure that out. A mm -hmm. lot of those people you would think would get so angry mm -hmm. they couldn't vote him out because mm -hmm. he wasn't elected. But the people who were in, you would think. For allowing him to do that, they would, but I guess. No, they were working class people. And yeah. they went to, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they said, no, we're eminent domain, I guess. We're taking over your, your street and your mm -hmm. block and the next 10 blocks over and putting an expressway here. And mm -hmm. he didn't divide it up Queens, and it's amazing, you know, mm -hmm. and he divided up Brooklyn too, where neighborhoods, ethnic neighborhoods of Italians or whatever would be there for years, and then all of a sudden they were divided by, you know. So Jones Beach, before he got going, what, what, what was that like? That wasn't much of, uh, I think, I'm uh, trying to remember the exact phrase, it was like a sand spit or something is what someone had called it. Zach Spade? But they, well, yeah, I mean, it was just, it was basically very, uh, completely undeveloped. So they, he came in and he, apparently he had gone on a boat by himself and looked around and saw the possibility. Wow. I think, I think that was some of the, the thing that was appealing about Robert Moses was that he had vision but um, not always, you know, it was a but bit Machiavellian in his, Beach, his ways of... But he couldn't take Jones Beach just by taking it. He, that's right. He actually had a vote mm. on that. The town of Babylon, the town of Oyster Bay, the town of uh, Hempstead, all those citizens had a vote because don't forget, they, and to this day, you still have those little, little uh, uh, cottages out in the water, yes. which, which, oh. which actually got yeah. grants uh, to, to be there. Otherwise, they would have been this day, raised a house or something like that. And I heard the mm -hmm. vote was a little bit fraudulent. Mm because they had to vote this land to eminent domain to the state, not just give it to the state. Hmm. Well, there's some people, once they pass through this uh, world, they, they do well or not so well, and they're forgotten. But mm -hmm. Moses, for whatever, good or bad, uh, 50, 60 years after, his effects are still being... Right. He's still controversial, he's still... Yeah, it's just like uh, um, what he did, it's like Levittown, you know, the man who right. built Levittown, you know, we know, we got him implanted as a Levittown, Pennsylvania too, by the way. Mm -hmm. But all Levittown was either the first or the second one, and it revolutionized the idea of housing. Mm -hmm. right it really here. created the suburb, you know, uh, the right. idea of the suburb. Ticky tacky houses just built on and built on, and you had a choice, well, three different type of house, you know. Right. Okay, <laughs> um, anything else about Moses? We've uh, pretty well, We've I, I guess we could say time. some good, some bad, and uh, depends on your well, perspective. Well, his influence, what, died down after the World's Fair in the mid-60s, I think, or something like that. He was getting old or whatever, and people, how many, I mean, um, how many expressways can you build? How many, how many he roads? definitely, but every yeah, time it caught up with expressway, him. He had something to do with it. It did catch up with him, though, because at, towards the end of his career, um, from what I understand, from what I read, that it, uh, he wasn't able to, he was grasping for any straw of and power. And probably no one could have that much power again. Never, yeah. probably, no. It's interesting at this about point that, too, is, is, is the, the ending is sad, but he doesn't realize, well, he did tremendous things for Long Island. But uh, you go back to the jazz age with uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald, right? He never had the success with his book that everybody be, people thought. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a big seller, you know, The Great Gatsby. Sold 20,000 copies. Wow. And he died in 1940, he thought he was a failure. Right. You know how that book became popular? The end of war, they issued that book to all the servicemen. 150,000 copies were given away free to the servicemen wow. for reading material. And then they read it and they brought it home and it became part of Long Island War. I had no idea, that's Afterwards. very interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing that he didn't realize he had a success there. But history is called history for a reason. Sometimes it's not an immediate answer to things. Mm -hmm. When Abraham Lincoln made his Gettysburg Address, he thought he was a failure. 
and they had a famous artist who spoke for two hours after or before, I forget, but everybody thought he would be remembered, but it was Lincoln's speech that was mm -hmm. remembered, but that that's not, doesn't happen like instantaneous no, sometimes. No. Okay, um, let's mention t uh, weather events, please. I don't, without uh, the, the two big ones? The blizzard of 38. The two big ones. Yeah, okay. and how does that compare okay. to the, uh, well, I can, the I, can I can throw a third one in here if you want some obscure Whatever. thing. I, obscure history, I yeah. love. Uh, <laughs> the summer of 1818, there was no summer. It was like this winter we had, the crops froze, oh, everything really? couldn't grow. That's right, yes. It was, a, it was, it was global and it hit Long Island bad because we're, we're agriculture society, don't forget, mm. up to World War One. But let's get mm. to the main one, which is the hurricane of 38. It was it a mm. blizzard or a hurricane? Hurricane. Yeah, hurricane. Sorry. Sorry. Hurricane. Hurricane of 38, when was that? Uh, September. September. I don't have the exact date on it. Okay. September or October, I think it was September. Okay. And it was a calm day before. And actually it hit Long Island pretty bad, but New England worst. I mean, it was it, it, the town of uh, and Rhode Island, the, the city. What's the uh, the capital of the city? Of Providence. Providence. Ah, ah the really? streets were flooded. Oh. Oh, and, Ro and, and Long Island, it hit obviously the beach areas, the Hamptons, uh, the uh, small villages of eastern Long Island, as opposed to the western end of it. Um, lost a lot of lives and uh, mm -hmm. lost a lot of people. Fire Island was was, was almost wow. flooded over. Mm -hmm. um, very big for Long Island as far as a, a, a tragic na natural incident. Now, of course, mm -hmm. the people then didn't have the media they have today. A lot right. of them probably didn't know what was happening. Sunny or day the day before. Wow. Right. Beautiful right. fall day, nice, sunny, and then the storm came in. Bingo. And we didn't have the communications like right. we had today. I'm not, not but close. On Sandy, which is the second event, the right. third, uh, we had the communications, but everything just well, and, and we weren't prepared for those communications to go down. So, um, you know, it was a little bit, it was a terrifying time. And an um, island is a danger for? 123, yeah. 123 miles of us, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but here's the, here's the thing that's interesting is the development after World War I put those houses on the South Shore. Right on the edge. Before there were just land dumps. They were just filling, they were just sand. Mm -hmm. And they just fill it in and say, okay, we'll go houses here. Yeah. And Wantour, Babylon, uh, uh, Seaford, you name those towns there that all got flooded. There wasn't houses there for the hurricane of 38. Mm. Uh, okay. Interesting. That, yeah. that developed after that and after the war. All right? And that was susceptible to the sandy hurricane we had. Mm. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been, well, a hurricane because nobody would have been involved with it except for those houses which were developed after the war. So you're saying t even today, 2014, was still. Nothing will prepare <coughs> Long Island for a storm like that again. No, no. Yeah. Nothing. No. What do you think? No, I mean we're vulnerable, and that's I mean that's the bottom line. I mean, it, obviously, what happened on in, on the Jersey Shore side um, was, you know, um, just something that no one's ever going to forget for generations. But even but Long Island is, uh, you know, it's it's this large glacial deposit that is you know is primarily. I mean, sand and and it's just it's an incredible i mean i'm uh, constantly amazed at just the geographic differences uh, the terrain differences in on long island it's just such a you know you have this um, these lush areas over to the west and then you further east you go it seems more of a, a sort of like a desert sort of atmosphere so you're, you're, we're hoping if nothing <coughs> so nothing is a line like that again because we're not it was the perfect but we storm, can't, it, it was you know. but yeah. but we had the perfect uh, uh, suburban feed for it you know uh, the, the idea is to prepare for the next one is actually mm -hmm. do a lot of things to you know like you're doing now you know new flood zones you, mm -hmm. uh, raising your houses up right uh, Long Island is very vulnerable those storms right. I mean, the perfect one hit us and there's no guarantee that another one, no. one won't come along. So. Okay, uh, we've got a couple of minutes left. I just want to mention two uh, famous uh, entertainment venues, if you want. Okay. Uh, the Nassau Coliseum and um, uh, Beth Page State Park. There's a book oh. on it. They can show that for you. Okay, Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. Okay. Um, when was that built? Who built it? And uh, okay, wh wh what's <coughs> going to happen in the future? You want to go first? No, you go ahead. Okay, uh, the Veterans Coliseum actually is, is, is one of the important events that happen in, in, in uh, Long Island as far as entertainment. You talk about the Jazz Age. Mm -hmm. Well, in the '70s, it was a very big need to draw teams here. Uh, they had the first the Nets or something. The basketball yes. team showed up there. The, uh, the book 
there was an Arcadia book that came out about two, three years ago. I helped out the author with it. It was a reporter. But actually, it was three venues that we had, or two before that. We had the Cherry Valley Arena, which was in Franklin Square, wow. which they used to have professional wrestling in. Okay. And it was the Comac Arena, sure. which some people remember mm -hmm. as the Long Island Ducks. Remember the, the, the old uh, you know, uh, hockey, hockey team? team? Yeah, but I think, I think Bob, if I'm not wrong, the Nets actually played some at the Comac Arena also. In they the might have, but I know the Long Island Ducks were oh, in okay. the Comac Arena, okay? They didn't play at the, uh, we got the, the uh, Long Island uh, uh, team, the, 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 not the Rangers, but the uh, Islanders, mm -hmm. right? okay? But 1972, under Nassau County, I think it was Ralph Casel was the supervisor, raised money again by bonds to build a, a, a real big coliseum. It was a state of art yes. coliseum mm -hmm. at the time. That and Colby um, Chase Stadium in 62 were probably the mm -hmm. two biggest projects for sports on Long Island. Mm -hmm. And the venues there lasted about 40 years. Unfortunately, they didn't keep up with the infrastructure. Yes. And wow. now it's uh, outdated. Right. Yeah. But some, uh, some little trivia about Long Island uh, National Coliseum. Of course, Dr. J, Julius Irving, from Long Island, from Roosevelt, oh. played for the Nets. He was a fabulous pr player and still a fabulous man. Um, the Islanders won four straight Stanley Cups, which is r unheard of in the early 80s. And, an, and another bit of trivia, Elvis would have played on August 22nd, 1977. He passed the previous week. Oh, so right. his next concert was scheduled for Nassau oh, wow. Coliseum. So uh, now they are, they actually passed something. They are going to refurbish this or knock this down or? They had three or four different plans. All right, yeah. but they're yeah. gonna, you know, gonna take your pick yeah. on Something's that, gonna be done. Something is going to be done. done. We'll put it that way. Yeah. But unfortunately, yeah. we lost the Islanders. <coughs> they're going to Brooklyn. <coughs> We lost a lot of teams. Uh, yes. You know, the Jets sure never left us either. Yes. That's another. used to practice at Hofstra University. That's, an, that's another show. You know? Yeah. And how about the uh, Beth Page State Park? Uh, Was that Robert Moses again that did that? Well, Beth Page? Yeah. Did well, I know the WPA had a lot to do with it in the 30s. Right. But uh, people come from oh. all over come to golf there. Right. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a fabulous thing. Oh. They have yeah. five, five big golf courses yeah. in that. Uh, well, Eisenhower Park and has three, awesome, which you know. is amazing, right. yeah. yeah. So you know, the first, you know, the first amateur golf. golf course was in 1896 in Chinnacock out there? Did you play that? <laughs> no, I didn't, no, 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 not in 1896, <laughs> so. But that's true, the first, first uh, amateur golf course designed in America was out there in the, uh, in Chinnacock out there by Montauk. We only have a minute or two left. I d just to show what it shows us is that Long Island was filled with history of people famous and not so famous. Mm -hmm. We can mention famous people like Theodore Roosevelt or F. Scott Fitzgerald, Billy Crystal, Jerry Seinfeld. We can mention, but Long Island was more than that. It was about the not so famous people mm -hmm. also. It's really this, uh, a wonderful set, a cross section of uh, history of our country um, all the way through, I mean, with, with all the progress uh, that happened in the 50s and 60s. So it's just to me, um, you know, the fact that we've got homes on Long Island that are dated 1660 and er some even earlier. And then, you know, these amazing palaces that and mansions and estates that still stand. It's just a, an incredible well, uh, sort of microcosm of uh, our, us, our history as a Long country. Island, us on Long Island are lucky to have Nicole and Bob and people <laughs> like you <laughs> carrying on this his, history. Keep thank it up. You. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for coming. Thank, thank you, you so much, Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for a terrific discussion. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. And please, follow Long Island's history on many uh, ways. Follow it. Listen to what they said and enjoy it. And enjoy the living history. Again, thank you, Sherry Baker and O. Westbury, for a terrific uh, job on camera and uh, letting us have this beautiful studio. Until next time, this is Joe Haino wishing you a good night and a better tomorrow.